Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at ring final circuits, or more specifically, one of the specific tests that's done there, and how it is that if you've measured the resistance of the line and protective conductors, if you add those together and divide it by 4, somehow that magically gives you the value for the R1 plus R2 value. Now, it's not immediately obvious how that gets to being divided by 4. If you've got this book here, which is the uh, Guidance Note 3, then it does explain it in there in a kind of way. But uh, nevertheless, we're going to have a look at that and uh, explain how it is that dividing two values by 4 magically gets you the result of something else. Now, I have done a video on uh, ring final circuit testing previously, so if you haven't seen that, then it's a good idea to actually go and watch that first, because otherwise this might not make a whole deal of sense. But just as a quick reminder, a ring circuit is where you have your consumer unit with your circuit breakers or whatever inside, and then the circuit cabling comes out of the consumer unit. Here's the line conductor, goes to various sockets and things there, and crucially returns to the consumer unit. And you would have your uh, socket outlets things located at various points along there. And of course the uh, protective conductor will do exactly the same. And the neutral as well, we're not going to uh, draw that in here. And the crucial point about this particular circuit is that the cabling here is undersized. It's generally 2.5 millimeters squared, and the protective device in the consumer unit is typically a 32 amp circuit breaker. The problem with that is that 2.5 millimeter wire is only rated generally to about 26 amps, so normally that wouldn't be permitted, but because it's a ring, you've got two conductors basically going to everything. The current is shared, so therefore it is permitted as long as the cable rating is greater than 20 amps, which uh, of course 26 definitely is. And it's absolutely critical that the ring is completely intact because if there was a break here somewhere, then you've only got a single cable rated 26 amps protected by a 30 giant device. So of course the cable could melt and be damaged and so on. Now ring circuits are a very specific and one type of a circuit. It's the only one that is a ring, everything else is a radial. Again, we've covered that in previous videos. And one of the tests here is to confirm that the ring is all connected correctly. And we've seen this before in the previous video, and it's done by connecting the line and protective conductors together once they've been removed from the consumer unit, and then checking a resistance at each outlet as you go round. Now this is in guidance note 3, this on page 47 of the current version. And the testing is to remove the two ends of the ring from the consumer unit, connect the protective conductor of one to the line conductor of the other, and then connect the protective conductor of that one to the line of the other one. So uh, basically it's forming one very large loop there. Most important to do it like this. You don't want to connect those two together in this one because that will give you completely incorrect results. And then the idea is you go around all of the socket outlets, check the resistance between the line and protective conductor, and you should get the same resistance at each point. And if you don't, then there's something wrong or it's uh, not been connected correctly and so on. And if you have a look at the uh, information here, it says the resistance between line and protective conductor is measured at each socket outlet. The readings obtained each of the socket outlet wired in the form of a ring will be substantially the same. And the value will be approximately one quarter of the resistance of the line plus CPC loop resistances. So those two divided by four. Now, this is not immediately obvious because if we go back to our diagram here, a previous test will establish the resistance of the protective conductor, and another one would establish the resistance of the uh, line conductor there. So what it's basically saying is that with those two linked in that particular way, the resistance between the two is somehow resistance of this one, resistance of that one added together, and then divided by four. Now the reason it's divided by four, we'll just uh, cover that here. So what you've got is your protective conductor, we know what that resistance might be. And then we have the line conductor. And we know what resistance so that is. And when we're doing the test here, this is connected to over there. And then this one is connected over there. Now, what we've eventually got here now is one big loop of wire, because if we start at this point here, we can go all the way around the line conductor there. Comes back here onto the middle there, continuing going round and round. We come back here and we end up where we started. So all of this is, is basically a big circle of wire. And we're basically going to measure the resistance across between the two at any point. And because it's a big circle of wire, measuring across it at any point should be exactly the same, assuming it is actually one big circle. Now in a normal circuit, 
you would join the two at one end, you would just have a radial circuit coming out to the last socket, protector conductor coming out as well. What you do on a normal circuit, as in a radial, is join those two together, and then you would measure the resistance at the end here. So you're measuring resistance of that one plus the resistance of that one, and that would obviously be the total. So in that case it's uh, pretty straightforward, but for some reason in this case it's somehow dividing it by four. So here's why it's dividing it by four. Though as we saw previously, this is just a big circle of wire. So we can actually redraw this as just one big circle and separate those two out because bearing in mind it goes around, comes back out to the start. So what we've actually got is a big circle with half of it as the line conductor and the other half as the protective conductor. And of course they're joined at the ends like that. And the two ends it's joined are basically the ends here. So we've now done it in a big circle. And when we're actually measuring the resistance here, we're measuring basically across two points like that. So we're measuring across the width of this circle. So for example, we might be measuring between this point here and this point over here. Now we know the resistance of the green and brown wires as we've got them here. Now let's going to say that the resistance of the wires here is actually the same. I'm going to use some easy numbers to make this as obvious as possible. So let's say that the protective conductor resistance of that one was equal to 2 ohms. Now of course in reality it wouldn't be that high but this is just a demonstration. And we'll say the resistance of the brown one is also 2 ohms. And again in reality it's probably going to be a larger value for the protective one because that's usually a smaller size. But We'll just use these values to uh, make it uh, fairly obvious. So 2 ohms there and 2 ohms there, and that would be the value if you've got the two ends of this at the consumer unit. Measure the resistance between them and there's your 2 ohms. Now if measuring across the circle, it doesn't matter where the joins are because as the two wires go around the same path of the circuit, if we move this one down here, this will move here. So we're always measuring across basically the diameter of a very large circle. Now this brown wire is 2 ohms. So inevitably we can say that this piece here is 1 ohm and this piece here is also 1 ohm, that brown bit there and the brown bit there. And of course because this is also 2 ohms here we know for a fact that that's got to be 1 ohm there and 1 ohm over there. And it doesn't matter if we move these pieces around because the distance between them that would reduce and this would increase so proportionally it's all going to work out the same. So with it connecting this arrangement we've essentially divided it into those four individual parts. So what we've got between these two pieces here is essentially half of, say, the brown wire there and half of the green one over there. And in parallel with that, we've got half of it there and half of it there. Now, if you're going to divide something by half, it's going to reduce it, obviously, by half. If you put resistors in parallel, it reduces it by half again. Now, total resistance of this whole circle is 2 plus 2, which rather obviously is 4 ohms. If we were to measure the resistance across here, between there and there. Essentially we've got this 1 ohm segment here and a 1 ohm segment there, so that's a 2 ohm piece there. So if we draw that dot in and drop there, we can simplify that as half of each of the wires, so that will be a resistor of 1 plus 1 is 2. And then we've also got half the wires over here, which we'll just draw as a single resistor. 1 plus 1 is also 2. So we've got two 2 ohm resistors in parallel. Now we've put resistors in parallel and they're both the same. The value is effectively halved because you've got two routes for the current flow rather than just one. So in the end that works out to be a single resistor of only 1 ohm in value. And this is why it's this value which is 4 and it's divided by 4 which in this case equals 1 which is the 1 that we get down here. So because in this particular test you're putting the entire thing into a giant loop and it's essentially a circle, you've got half the length of the two conductors involved depending on where you measure, but say if you move this down here that goes up there so it's still the big circle you're measuring across the diameter of it. Half of each cable is involved, it's one ohm each so it's a total of two, and then you're going to put those in parallel as well so you're halving it because you've got half of each cable, two roots which obviously halves it again, which is how you end up with a quarter of the total value. Now if you wanted to do that as a practical demonstration, then you can. You could easily get some resistors and just put some resistors in the formation like that. So 
If you've got some 1 ohm resistors, you could get some resistors, two points like that. You could put a resistor here, say of 1 ohm, another one here of 1 ohm. So in total, that's going to be 2 ohms there. If you then did the same over this side, you could put another resistor there, say 1 ohm resistor, and you could stick another one in there, also 1 ohm. So of course that side is also 2 ohms in total, because it's just 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1. But if you then join that at the bottom, which of course there's our circle, between here and here, you've got 2 ohms and 2 ohms, which essentially is just two resistors in parallel. So that's going to be 2 and 2. 2 resistors in parallel is half the value of those, so that equals 1 ohm. And that's essentially what we had there. That's just a big circle of continuous wire with a resistance, but it's the same principle as if you had four resistors in that uh, kind of arrangement there. So that is why the value from that particular test can be divided by 4, and that then gives you the uh, resistance between the two, so resistance to the green conductor plus the brown one, and then if they're looped in a big circle it's a quarter of the value, simply because you're doing half the length of the cable in each piece, and then you've got those two in parallel, so it's halving, and then it's halving again, which is dividing by 4. Now if you have guidance note 3, it is actually explained in there, it's basically the same thing we just went through there, so uh, you've got the resistance of each loop there, two loops combined into a circle. They've actually done it here so that you're just testing across it, but if you look at that, it is actually a continuous circle all the way around with the four resistances in. They've actually used proper values as well, but uh, half of each wire here in the blue and the brown in this particular case, but the principle is the same. That simplifies to this, which basically goes to that. So you halved it there because you've got half of each, and you're halving again because it's the two resistances in parallel, which gets you to the value at the end. And so they've actually done it here with the uh, line and neutral conductors, but the principle is exactly the same. That's just giving you a different value. Obviously, because they've used different values to start with. So an explanation there of how the uh, two values of two loops of wire divided by four can then equal the resistance measured between the two conductors when they're installed normally. And it is just that idea of a circle measuring across and dividing it by two for the half of each and then dividing it by two again because there's two of them. And uh, that may not seem particularly obvious, but uh, if you go and watch it again, I'm sure you'll uh, get the idea in the finish. And if not, of course, the easy way to avoid all that bother is to not install ring final circuits at all. Just uh, get rid of them and uh, install radios, just like the rest of the world has been doing forever. So uh, that's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.